Former NFL running back Mike Adamley recently retired from sports casting, and he is living with what he says doctors believe may be chronic traumatic encephalopathy, or CTE. The only thing that I remember was that he said you have symptoms that are concurrent with CTE. Adamley has good days and bad days. He does what he can to combat the depression, frustration, and forgetfulness he faces with exercise, diet, and cognitive stimulation. He leans on friends and family. We've got sort of a, a fraternity of players who just, you know, call each other up and wherever we need it and, you know, for lack of a better phrase, talk each other off the ledge, you know, and because you do, you do really get paranoid and depressed. In a new study, Dr. Ann McKee of the VA Boston Healthcare System and the Boston University CTE Center studied the donated brains of deceased former football players who played in high school, college, and the pros. Their brains were examined for signs of CTE, and players next of kin provided information about athletic histories, mood, and cognitive symptoms. CTE can only be confirmed post-mortem. Pathologic evidence of CTE was found in 177 of the 202 former players, including 110 of the 111 NFL players whose brains were studied. The study appears in JAMA, the Journal of the American Medical Association. The main results were there was a shockingly high percentage of CTE amongst the brain donors. Uh, that is, we found uh, 110 out of 111 former NFL players had diagnostic lesions of CTE at autopsy. We found 91% of college players, and we found even uh, evidence of CTE in some high school players, about 3 of 14 or 21%. Uh, so this says to us that CTE is a problem. It is a problem associated with football. There are caveats to the study, including that brain bank donors don't represent the overall population of former football players. Adam Lee would like to see the game he loves be safer. Whether they can do that over a period of time in the next 20 years, I'm not certain. I don't think anybody is certain. Laura Berger, The JAMA Report.